If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate in North Carolina, you'll eventually cross paths with a realtor. And that means at some point, you'll be asked to sign the Working with Real Estate Agents brochure. In this video, I'm going to explain this brochure to a buyer. My name is Kristen, and I'm your Charlotte Realtor. When you're buying real estate, you may find it helpful to work with a real estate agent. Real estate agents can provide many useful services and help you in many ways in a real estate transaction. In some cases, the agents will work for the seller. In other cases, the buyer and seller will both have their own real estate agents. And, in, and then in other cases, the same agents will work for both the buyer and seller simultaneously. It's extremely important to know whether an agent is working with you as your agent or if they're just assisting you while acting as the agent of the other party. This brochure addresses the various types of agency relationships that may be available to you. It also will help you decide what type of relationship you wanna have with your agent. After that, you'll also see in the brochure um, what responsibilities a real estate agent has and how real estate agents get paid. When you're asked to sign this brochure, sometimes it will look like this and other times it might be electronically signing a document or you might get a printout, but they all say the same thing. I just wanna show you what it looks like. So if you get the brochure, what you see is when you open it up, you'll get some information about what's in the brochure and then it begins talking about how the brochure relates to sellers. As you keep going, it talks about buyers. And then this last piece right here is perforated and tears off. This piece right here is what you sign and the agent keeps this. And the rest of this belongs to you. So when you sign this, it is not a contract. You're not signing that you're going to be their client and they're going to be your agent. All it is is a signature of acknowledgement, almost like when you go to the pharmacy, the doctor's office, the hospital, and you have to sign that HIPAA document for privacy. That's like this, whoops. <laughs> That's like this right here. It just, you're just acknowledging that you have received and read the document and you know what agency options are available to you in North Carolina. When buying real estate, there are some choices that are available in regards to your relationship with the agent. The agent can be a buyer's agent, and this means they work solely for you as the buyer. The agent can be a dual agent, meaning they work for both the buyer and seller at the same time, or the agent can work for the seller and be a seller's agent or seller's sub agent. Those are the different options. Not every firm offers all of these options to buyers, but it's important to know that they exist. Once you have agreed, either orally or in writing, to form an agency agreement with the firm and its agents, then they owe you certain fiduciary duties. I explain all about these in another video, so check, make sure you check that out. But briefly, they owe you obedience, loyalty, disclosure of all material fact, confidentiality, accounting of all monies, and reasonable care, skill, and diligence. Be sure that if anything, um, you, that you don't say anything to an agent that you wouldn't want the seller to know until you have that agency agreement in place. To make sure that you and the real estate firm have a clear understanding of your relationship, it may be best to have a written agreement in place. It is possible that for a time you can work with an agent without a written agreement However, when you decide to make an offer on a property, then we must have that written agreement in place. If you refuse to sign it, the agent can no longer represent and assist you and is no longer required to keep information about you confidential. Be sure to read and understand a buyer agency agreement before you sign it. After you sign it, you will get a copy from the agent. Whether you have a written or unwritten agency agreement, the agent can help you with many things. They can help you find a suitable property. 
arrange financing, learn more about the property, and otherwise promote your best interests. If you have a written agency agreement, the agent can also help you write an offer and submit it to the seller. A buyer's agent can be compensated in a couple different ways. For instance, you can pay the agent out of your own pocket, or the agent can seek compensation from the seller first, and if they are unable to receive compensation from the seller, then you can pay out of your own pocket in that case. Whatever the case is, be sure that you understand that in the buyer agency agreement before you make an offer on a property and that you carefully read and understand the compensation provision. You may permit the agent or firm to represent both you and the seller at the same time. This dual agency relationship may occur if you become interested in a property that your buyer's agent is also the listing agent for. In this case, your agent still owes you all of the fiduciary duties and you just need to remember that he or she is treating both the buyer and seller with the equal and fair um, relationship. Another situation that's a little bit a little bit the same, a little bit different, is designated dual agency. This means that the same firm is involved in the seller and buyer, but a different agent is representing both parties. Um, so either one of these, if you allow this to happen, it will be in your written buyer agency agreement. You do have to allow this situation to occur. So just make sure that you know this um, know these two scenarios and talk it over with your real estate agent if you have any questions. And there you have it. That's the buyer side of the Working with Real Estate Agents brochure. If you have any questions, make sure to reach out either in the comments or directly. I hope I taught you something today.